Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hopefully you're having an amazing day. I want to kickstart this video discussing Zen 4, specifically news that we will see an increase in core count for AMD's upcoming processors. Now, AMD have a philosophy that more cores is a good thing. And we first really saw AMD competing very favorably with Intel with this, not just in the first generation of their Zen processors for desktop, but also the server as well. And current AMD uh, server SKUs as well as Threadripper go up to 64 cores. And this is thanks to a combination of different technology. One of course is chiplets. But there is an issue which is stopping AMD increasing core counts again. And that of course is memory bandwidth. Basically, if you can't feed the cores, it doesn't matter how many cores you have. Therefore, the move to DDR5 is going to be the linchpin for AMD's strategy going forward. But this brings us on to today's news, specifically a roadmap which has been leaked by videocards.com. As always, I'll plonk the link down below. Now, it is worth noting that the roadmap itself is a little bit old and does generally refer to the embedded products. So you can see it yourself on screen. However, it does seem to indicate that we will see a higher core count for the Zen 4 product. It doesn't actually specify, but we'll get into that in just a moment. But this is not the first time that we've actually heard about an increase in core count for Epic processors. In fact, back in February, Executable Fix, who is on Twitter, they're well worth following, by the way, also leaked that we will see an increase in core count for AMD's upcoming processors. And while again, they didn't specify the core count, I'll get again into that in just a second. They did also mention other things such as AVX, Bfloat 16 and other ISA extensions. And of course there's numerous other architecture improvements. So as for core count, I've personally been hearing that AMD are targeting 96 cores for Zen 4. Again, this of course is for the server market. Whether this trickles down to Threadripper, I honestly don't know. I mean, <laughs> If you are a visual effects artist, you know, 3D modeler, whatever, and this would be of interest to you, let me know. I'm not a professional in this area, so I don't know how well that, that kind of workload uh, scales across different uh, animation and 3D packages. So please educate me down in the comments below. But, you know, I imagine people would absolutely love it. As to my understanding, you know, the Threadripper Pros with 64 cores, they seem to be rather popular at the moment. And of course, they can be used for not just a single workstation, but you could start divvying them up with virtual machines and other such cool things. But yeah, it, when it comes to the server market anyway, obviously, the, the more um, dense you can make a processor node, in other words, the more cores you can throw into a package, and the more energy efficient as well, it's incredibly attractive to the data center. And AMD's market share here is increasing exponentially. Zen 4 itself is looking to be absolutely beastly. We're hearing drastic increases in IPC across the Zen 4 suite. But the big question is, what does this mean for Ryzen? Well, um, I personally believe that there's a good chance AMD will be retaining 16 cores, 32 threads for the Ryzen series of processors. I'm, for this video, going to refer to them as Ryzen 6000 because it seems that AMD are cancelling Warhol, as I've discussed before. Uh, I might put out another video, actually, on exactly what's happening with all of the processor news because, quite frankly, there's so much conflicting information. So maybe I'll throw out a video and kind of go over everything we know so far. So look out for that in the next couple of days. So I'm going to call uh, Zen 4 for Ryzen, Ryzen 6000, although, of course, we don't officially know what that's called. I personally believe there's a very good chance AMD will be retaining 16 cores, 32 threads for this. However, um, it's possible that they've not fully made the decision and they are going to decide based on what Intel, you know, are competing with. Alder Lake is probably going to get demolished by Zen 4 for the desktop. There's just no way, in my opinion, it's going to compete. Again, Alder Lake isn't a bad architecture. It's not a bad processor. It's very impressive. And the successor to Alder Lake, uh, Raptor Lake, is also looking to be pretty decent as well. However, my personal opinion is that AMD, you know, Zen 4 is looking really, really good. I've been told by multiple people now that while Alder Lake is decent, it's the subsequent architectures like in two, three, four years from Intel, which are really impressive. And I think, you know, if you think about how long silicon takes to bring up, 
it makes sense, right? You can't just flip a switch. You can't just internally say, well, okay, this is what we need to do to compete. Look, for example, um, back in hindsight of what AMD were forced to do with the Zen architecture, where you had Jim Keller and a whole bunch of guys at AMD basically do an entire ground up design for Zen. And yeah, if we look back at Zen 1, it's almost quaint, not necessarily in terms of core count, but the IPC, right? And it's, it's kind of funny because if you think about it from a very um, you know, harsh point of view, if Intel had been even a little more aggressive, like uh, just imagine, for example, if the 6700K launched with four cores, eight threads, and then the 7700 had essentially been the 8700K, I think maybe we'd have seen quite a different landscape, but obviously Intel have had a whole slew of problems, not least of which is their manufacturing process, which we've gone over multiple times before in videos. But yeah, I personally believe that Zen 4 is going to be ridiculous. And I'm hearing Zen uh, 4 is not the only concern for these companies because RDNA 3, the more I'm hearing about that architecture, the more ridiculous it honestly sounds. Um, I'm hearing it could actually, you know, I, I'm getting pretty convinced at this point, it could be one of the biggest leaps we've seen in graphics, possibly ever. And that, you know, I'm trying to not be too excited about an architecture which is A, next year, and B, that obviously is not confirmed, but AMD are not stopping up. They are, they, sorry, not stopping. They are being really relentless here. And it's their ecosystem as a whole, not necessarily just in terms of the software, but how the hardware itself, like AMD definitely have a have a really good kind of overarching plan. Like they have a they have a plan for domination, damn it. And I think they're executing extremely well. And now we're gonna jump our way onto the RTX 3080 Ti as well as the RTX 3070 Ti and a few things which have been happening with NVIDIA news. So First of all, MSI have done some oopses and have basically accidentally confirmed via their website that the RTX 3080 Ti actually exists. And videocards.com have also leaked a couple of slides as well. We can see that the 3080 Ti is indeed 12 gigabytes of RAM, which surprises about zero. I'm pretty sure at this point, if you were to go into a space shuttle, travel 100 times the faster than light, all the way to the other side of the universe, you were to find an alien, and we'll call him Zog. You were to knock on Zog's door, ask Zog what the specs of the RTX 3080 Ti are, and he would be like, ah, it's got 12 gigabytes of RAM, mate. Anyway, um, getting back to the point, I don't actually know where that came from. Uh, the funny thing is, I'm British and I never use the term mate either, but it just seemed to work. Anywho, oh God, you can tell my brain is random today. Anywho, uh, so the 3070 Ti is also um, utilizing eight gigabytes of RAM as well. And I, I, I'm, I'm kind of interested more about the 3070 Ti in some ways, simply because I'm interested to see how, despite the fairly modest bump in CUDA cores compared to the RTX 3070, I'm kind of interested to see just how well it kind of plays out with this additional memory bandwidth, which obviously it offers. But the really big thing is that now manufacturers are starting to release new cards which do not have the mining, you know, the mining performance, they're kind of holding it back. And, uh, you know, we all know about the mining uh, nerfs, LHR or light hash rate as they're being sometimes called, or low hash rate, depending. And I'm kind of hopeful that this does eventually start to trickle down to customers. The thing is, you know, as we've discussed multiple times at this point, the issue isn't just that miners exist and the scalpers, even if you were to take all of that out of the equation, there is just such a big TAM, total available market, which AMD, NVIDIA have to satisfy. And at the end of the day, I do think that they will start to, you know, do this, especially as we start to, you know, kind of open back up and all of that jazz. Um, so hopefully with the 3080 Ti, um, you know, being mining limited, although of course, whether miners manage to circumvent this in the future, I don't know, but hopefully they don't because obviously gamers, well, yeah, they they, they need cards, damn it. I am interested to see how the 3080 Ti does, not least of which because of the additional memory. It's obviously got two gigabytes of additional memory, a little bit of additional memory bandwidth, 
but in terms of performance it's not exactly difficult to kind of guess how well it's going to perform it's not like it's some um, completely alien architecture or whatever or a really you know completely different number of CUDA cores at the end of the day you can probably just take a 1390 shave a little bit of performance maybe five or ten percent depending on the title the resolution all of that stuff and you can probably get a good idea of how well the 30 uh 3080 ti performs also just for those who have missed it i might as well throw in that we will see both of these cards launch early june so not too long uh to wait now uh, and then obviously they're going to start to be seeded to the press probably late this month if i had to guess and then obviously you know we can start seeing them hopefully uh, in some decent quantities by early next uh, month and i'm going to throw this in here just for a bonus piece of news and that is starfield is actually going to be exclusive to both the xbox and pc platforms i'm not exactly surprised that this is the case now this was originally leaked by another youtuber rand al4 i believe is how he pronounced the name but this has subsequently been backed up by jeff grubb now personally i've heard that microsoft will make a lot of the titles from bethesda and the studios they've acquired you know under that umbrella exclusive to the xbox and i'm sure many of you have also kind of heard the same thing uh, i'm hearing that starfield may even launch this year although since we've seen so little i almost don't believe that that's the case but hopefully i'm wrong because again you know i think a the xbox platform needs the games let's just be honest and b it from the little tiny bit we've seen, it looks really cool. Um, but I, I'm not really surprised that the title is exclusive to the Xbox platform. Again, look how much money Microsoft threw into the, you know, into the pot to purchase these studios. It doesn't really make sense to have simultaneous releases. I'm not saying there won't be games on the PlayStation ever. Like, for example, the next the next Elder Scrolls game eventually might make its way to the PlayStation or whatever. But I think that they're at the very least going to have a hefty dose of exclusivity, uh, timed exclusivity on the Xbox and PC platforms. But personally, I think the vast majority of games will be exclusive to the Xbox and, um, and the PC, simply because, again, how much Microsoft have paid for this, it just it doesn't really make sense for them to just put them onto all platforms. With that said, thank you very much for checking out the video. If you've enjoyed it, you know what to do. And uh, yeah. Have an amazing day. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.